It is the deadliest type of single vehicle accident in the nation. An estimated 400 people die every year trapped in a vehicle submerged in water. You can survive, but experts say what you do in that first 30 to 60 seconds can mean the difference between life and death. Jennifer Ann Wilson is live in Oak Park tonight with Secrets to Survival. Jim? Yeah, absolutely. They are secrets no more. We're going to share them with you. And here at Diamond Towing, they've actually given us this vehicle to show in a live demonstration tonight some of the things that you need to do. But first, if you happen to be in a car that goes into water, your first instinct might be to call 911. But experts say put that phone away. First responders won't make it in time. And in this instance, every second counts. 911, what is the address of your emergency? In the blink of an eye. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Jesus. It can happen to anyone, anywhere. The car is in the water under the bridge. In Rochester Hills, a man loses control. Is the person out of it? I think he's still in it. In Van Buren Township, a grandmother trapped. Is she above water? She is above water now, but the car is sinking. The car is sinking. The clock is ticking. The average vehicle will sink uh, in about two and a half minutes. Michigan State Police Trooper Joe Kewen says you need to act fast. Roll down your window, unbuckle your seatbelt, and then exit through that window. It sounds easy, but is it? This contraption was built to simulate what it's like when a real car goes into the water. It's for the Michigan State Police to use as training, but today, it's my turn. Even in a controlled environment with first responders nearby, my heart was racing as I hit the water. Once that panic sets in, if you don't know that there's a plan, now you're in a, a more dire situation. Just three steps to remember. Window down. Window, seatbelt, out. But what if you're on the outside watching a 70 year old woman run out of time? Can you guys get her out of the car? I can't get to where the water is very deep. Know your limitations first uh, before you enter the water. Adrenaline spikes in an emergency situation. It really affects how long you can hold your breath. Never jump or dive in to rescue someone. We don't always know what that body of water consists of. We don't know the depth. Scoop your hands above your head like you're doing jumping jacks to propel yourself feet first. It's safer but harder. It, it took a little longer to get down than she expected. My lungs were burning trying to reach Trooper Austin waiting at the bottom of that 12-foot pool. I was kind of wondering if you are going to run out of air. Me too. I pushed past my panic and I got that door open. I unbuckled him, grabbed a shirt and just pulled. And thankfully the water did a lot of the work. And thankfully... There was a flotation device waiting for us. It takes a lot of energy to go down, open up a door, and get a victim out of the car. So by the time you get to the top, having this tire here was a pretty big deal. My rescue was a success, and so was the real one in Van Buren Township. They have a hold of the woman. Okay, you let me know if they pull her out, okay? Yes, ma'am, I'm watching. People are constantly amazed themselves, I think, at what they're able to accomplish. Once their body says no more, there's always something more to give. As long as you have a plan in place. I gotta tell you, that whole experience was a lot more challenging than what I expected. I learned so much, and it's all thanks to Michigan State Police Lieutenant Mike Shaw, who's here with us tonight, and his troopers. We were in a training pool for that, but things don't go quite as smoothly in real life all the time. Absolutely not. That was some nice, clean water in a very controlled environment, but a lot of times you're dealing with murky water. Sometimes that window just won't come down. All right, now, if the window doesn't come down, there is a, something called a window punch. It looks just like this. And in real life, you might not have the luxury of goggles or uh, tarps or things like I have right now, but I'm going to be extra safe. Uh, and we're going to, you're going to talk me through exactly how this window punch works. So All right, so if I'm inside the car and I need to get out, what do I do? So basically, you're going to look at the, the window here. The first instinct is to kind of hit it in the middle, which isn't going to work out very much for you. Yep. Actually, it works better than Work, what we planned. It worked better than we planned, but <laughs> we want to actually hit it is right here in the corner. All right, and then you want to push out that glass. 
with like a, a coat or, or something like that and then climb out that window. Now this works if you're trying to get out of the car, but you could also use this if you were trying to rescue someone who is trapped inside, correct? Correct. So if you have one in your car, you know, but first thing we always tell everybody, if you decide you're going to get in the water, have some type of flotation device to throw in the water before you get in. Now most people don't walk around with life jackets on, so why don't you show us quickly a few things that you might have in your own car. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't really think about it, but if you look at your own car, all you gotta do is go into the trunk, reach out here, grab yourself a spare tire, and just roll that spare tire right into the water, and that way you can kind of hold over there. But you'll notice that's a full-size tire. You don't really want to use a donut. It's not going to work as well. We're all in Michigan. It's summertime. We carry around our coolers with us. Here's another thing that floats right in the water for us. You just throw it out there. And the last thing that a lot of people don't think about here is this pops right out. You throw it in the water, it floats for you, and it gives yourself a little island. To, even if you don't get there right away, you can go up there and rest and then go back down and try to get that victim. A, I had no idea that seats of cars came out quite that easily or that they would be good flotation devices. So really good tips. Carolyn, Stephen, things to remember. The tire, the cooler, the seat of your car really could come in handy if things uh, happened, if there was an emergency that happened and you were near the water. Hey, uh, Jennifer, Anna, every movie ever made when a car goes into the water, they always have that air pocket at the top and they stick their head up and they breathe for a while. Is that fact or fiction to buy you more time? That is fiction. There isn't an air pocket. Lieutenant Shaw, can you tell us why? Yep, uh, because basically there, this does not hold air. So as soon as the car gets inside of there, all the air goes either out the engine compartment or out through the trunk. So that air pocket's gone right away. And a lot of times the weight of that engine is pulling it, the car down nose first. So if there is a pocket, it's in the trunk, right? Absolutely. And, and another myth that I really learned is a lot of people think that those electric windows won't roll down if they get wet, but that's not true. That's not true at all. There's so much insulation around the wiring inside of those windows that for at least 15 to 20 minutes, those windows are actually roll down for you. But if not, you showed them how to use that punch. Exactly. And if you happen to be a parent with kids, I've got something on our website, WXYZ.com, a web exclusive to show you how to exit a vehicle with your children if you happen to be trapped inside the car and your vehicle goes into water. So WXYZ.com for that web exclusive. Carolyn and Stephen, back to you. Jennifer, thank you. Thank you so very much for your time and, and thank uh, Mr. Shaw there for his time also and just 